Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. So, since the last episode, um, I have done a bit of building in here. Uh, you can see I've got the walls pretty well done. I've got a little bit more variation to do um, in these sections here to have it a bit more like that. You know, there's going to be overhangs and different things. Uh, but for the most part, the wall sections, the first layer of them are done. So now it's it's basically just going in and adding the other blocks and the detail work and stuff. And I was able to get all the water placed out and black concrete down. And so this area is a bit better. I mean, the, the grass sections are still really, really bland. I still have to add a lot of stuff there. Um, back in here, I did add the cave sections down through here. And uh, all the way to this end here. So... And then over here, uh, this is still pretty much the same. I do have pigs spawning in here. That's the only thing that's spawning in here at the moment. Um, basically just grinding up pork. Because even though we had pork um, from the animal traps, we were running through it. So uh, if we pop up here, um, well actually let's just pop down to the Batania area. That's actually where we're going to be working today is in the Batania area. Um, I did do a little bit of automation. I automated spreaders. Um, up through to the Elven Mana Spreader. The Elementium Pipes, I still haven't automated those yet. We will. Once I set up a Tinker's Construct thing, I guess. If there's... It's the only thing is there are much reason to actually automate it. Are we going to be using the higher tier spreaders at all? Hmm. See, I'm not really seeing much. I don't even know if it's worth automating or... What is the Modular Diversity? Adds mana input and output hatch. Some mechanism stuff. Huh. Okay. I don't know if it's used very much. We'll find out. But uh, I haven't noticed any of the blueprints requiring that. But um, anyways, I did automate that. And I also automated Plowman's Lunch. So that is automated through the AE system. But it's time that we get another, uh, another mana system going. Because I actually don't have any mana being fed into making Terra Steel. I also don't have any mana being fed in to make runes. This is all just from the rings. And then I don't have any mana going into the portal either. So uh, we do need to start sorting that. Um, so what we're going to do is I want to make um, our next flower. You know, I said that we're going to use at least a variety. I don't know if we'll use all of them, but we are going to use a variety of these. And what we're going to be going with is Gormialis. Gormialis. It's actually fairly quick um, in this pack to get to where you have infinite mana or you have infinite terra steel. It's very, very simple, so um, that is something that we will be working towards. But for now, um, this requires two light gray, two yellow, a red, rune of fire, and rune of summer. Okay, so let's grab ourselves rune of summer, rune of fire, and then we need, let me order a little bit more light gray. Okay, we need two light gray, we need one red, and then we need two yellow petals. And then we're going to need a seed. Okay, so if you recall, we do water bucket first, and then we do all the rest of the stuff, and then we do seed last. So let's go ahead and place all this out. And then we need our seed. And we're going to say that for right now, that makes a tape measure. Okay, and we'll go ahead and grab that. Just dump all that stuff. Okay. And then we'll toss that into there. And we're going to say, let's order ourselves a tape measure. If we come over here, we should see all the stuff drop in. It's actually not going to grab it, is it? There we go. Let me just pull this stuff up. There we go. And there is our Gormialis flower. Our very first one. And then we just have to change up our recipe and add Gormialis to the Advanced Item Collector. Let's do that. So you can also collect uh, Gormialis flowers. And we'll toss that into there. And then our pattern. That makes Gormialis. So now our system knows how to make the Gormialis flower. And I want to order um, another three of these, in fact. So go ahead and start making me a few of those. It's going to make some runes and stuff, uh, which is fine. And then while that's running, let's go ahead and order ourselves. I'm going to want... Uh, 
We'll say four. Four elven mana spreaders, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and do one spreader per flower. That's what I'm going to do. And we've got one more Gormialis. There we go. And uh, let's see, we've got a class that completed the Batania Gormialis flower. We'll go ahead and turn that in. We get a loot chest. There we go. And we got a Precision Sawmill. Okay, our Gormialis flower should be done. I got a few other things together um, while I was waiting for those to get done. And uh, I also automated, in addition to the Plowman's Lunch, I went ahead and automated... Um, if I can spell here. Uh, this right here, this corn beef hash, I did go ahead and automate that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just order one of those. And then what we're going to do is, let's see, let's take our Gormialis flowers, let's combine them with the floating white flowers, let's get our floating Gormialis flowers. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this up right over here. I've actually got a cable that's ran over. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our floating Gormialis. Let's do a flower there, a flower there, one right there, and one right there. Okay, and then what we're going to do is, let's see, the range on these is three wide. Oh, let's see, and we're going to have our spreaders. They're going to be setting right here, there, there, and there. And then we'll go ahead and just bind that to there, that to there, to there, to there. Okay. So all of those are bound up. And then let's get ourselves a mana pool. And I mean, it's not the best mana generation. If you recall, like in Divine Journey, I had like the super intro pinium set up that ran like a stack of TNT at a time. That generated a ton of mana. It's not going to be anything on that level. But... Um, we can pretty swiftly get infinite Terra Steel um, decently fast within this pack, so I think this will be fine. What we're going to do is we're going to set up our mana pool there. We're going to bind our spreaders over like that, and we're just going to use fabulous mana pools, of course, because they're a whole lot cheaper. Um, that's why we made a rush for the Bifrost stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our droppers, and we're going to put down... Uh, let's pull up that, that. Okay, so we're going to have precision droppers on each side of our flowers. So one's right there. And we're going to leave it on redstone mode deactivation. That's what we're going to do. You can set it to pulse. Um, but I think with the way I want to do it, I think I want it set to deactivation. This one right here is set to pulse because this is one that I had before. So we're just going to right click it with a redstone torch, set it to deactivation mode. Um, and then what we're going to do is, let's open up this a little bit, so we can actually move around in here. And right over here, let's see, it's four, right there's our fabulous mana pool. Okay, so what I want to do is, we're going to make something called a red string comparator. Uh, this is from Batania. Okay, I'm going to need some pixie dust. I'm going to need a block of redstone. And this recipe right here is cheaper. You don't need the pumpkin. Never understood why there's both of them, but there is. <laughs> there always has been, and I've never understood it. Because it's like identical, except one takes a pumpkin, one doesn't. So, anyways, there we go. There's our red string comparator. And then what we're going to do is, let's pop down here. And what we're going to do, there's our fabulous mana pool. And I want to read how full it is. So we're going to put our red string comparator. Let's, uh, there we go. There's my wand of the forest. There we go. I want it to point up into the fabulous mana pool. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to basically place a comparator like that. And it's going to read the redstone on how full this mana pool is. Just like as if I had the comparator right there with the mana pool. And that way I can kind of reduce, um, you know, the visible redstone above ground. So, I mean, that's pretty much what it's going to look like above ground here. It's just droppers, Gormialis flowers, and then that right there. And this should be... This should be fine. I don't... Actually, part of me wants to move these over. Um, 
normally they should prioritize the ones that aren't filled, but it is possible that, uh, which this can still go right here, that's fine. And we'll just bind this to that. Um, but if we move this over and just kind of spread this out a little bit, it'll be safer to make sure 100% that it's never going to eat food that belongs to the other flowers. Because I want each dropper to basically feed into one flower. So I think this will be just a little bit safer for us. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. Okay, so now that's all set up. It's all set up great. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, um, I guess, we're going to set up a mini chest that sets. Let's actually bring this back. We don't need to go this far. Uh, we're going to set up a mini chest right here and a mini chest right here. We're going to put exporter there, exporter there. And then we're going to bring our cable line down and plug into that. And that's all the AE2 stuff that we need. And I can actually reduce the number of cables right here. Okay, so those are connected up. We're going to go ahead and dump in our crafting cards. I'm starting to get some of the stuff out of our inventory now. And then we need to go grab our food items. So that this can start making those things for us. So we're going to need the plowman's lunch and the corned beef hash. Both of these, the reason I'm using these, you'll notice that they are similar foods. Um, in the amount of saturation and hunger that they give. And they're both pretty powerful foods. Yeah, they're actually identical on the amount of saturation and hunger that they give. So the stronger that your foods are, the more mana that's going to be produced, basically. So we're going to put in this side, we're going to put Plowman's Lunch. And on this side, Corned Beef Hash. I don't know what my dogs are barking at. And it's going to start outputting Plowman's Lunch and corned beef hash. Okay, so now we need to handle the redstone for this. Because uh, it's all going to be time system because the trick with the Gormialis is you need to feed it just when it needs food, whenever it's hungry. And then you also need to alternate food types. Okay, so what we're going to do, basically each, each of these droppers are going to be a different type of food. And uh, they're going to get dropped down. Um, the only thing is it's going to take a huge buffer of food initially. Uh, to get this all filled out so and I mean these foods don't craft like super super fast so we'll just use round robin it should be fine um, I mean you could fill these up with like say cobblestone or something like that it should only drop uh, the first slot if it has stuff in there but I'm gonna leave it as is okay so what we're gonna do we have redstone coming out of here this is actually gonna be for a shut off which we'll get into that here in just a second um, we'll go ahead and bring this let's see do we want to bring this out but we'll leave it right there for right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a animated torch. And we're going to have one side. We're going to have it facing off in this direction. This is from Batania. Um, this is actually going to stop me from being able to get down here. So I'm just going to dig out a little ways just so I can come and go as needed. And we'll just fix that right there. Um, the animated torch, basically, whenever it gets a redstone pulse or it gets... Um, a hovering hourglass pulse either one it'll basically rotate so we're gonna have it facing off in this direction so the redstone signal is gonna be coming off in this direction there's not gonna be a redstone signal on this side at the moment until it gets uh, flipped and then what we're going to do is we're gonna have a hovering hourglass that sets right here and so it's going to every so often it's gonna flip the animated torch okay and then what we're going to do is let me go get which actually, if I had this feed directly into, okay, it does shut off. That's perfect, actually. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have the animated torch is going to feed directly into a block of cobble, shutting off a redstone torch, because we're going to invert the signal, because this will work out a little bit better for us. That way we don't have, basically, you can shut off the hourglass um, if, you, if you send it a, red, or a mana pulse. But then we have to set up a whole other system to basically send mana over. So we're going to have to trickle some mana down. This keeps us from having to trickle mana down. Okay, so what we're going to do is, if you recall, redstone is deactivation on this. We're going to have the redstone just come out off in this direction. Um, away from there. And then what we're going to do is this signal right here. If 
this comparator gets filled. And we're gonna we're gonna set up a compare for it here in just a second. So we're gonna put a block here and say that if it is equal to or above this level, then emit a redstone signal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it so that if it has so much mana in here, it's basically going to override this. Okay, so we're gonna have this is gonna come out like that. And let me go get two repeaters gonna want two of those and that's so that we can separate the redstone signal because I don't want if we just plug up the redstone and it's basically going to have redstone across the board all the time because the redstone coming out of here or coming out of here is going to activate the entire system so we're gonna put a repeater right there repeater right there so that if this side has power then it's going to add power to this line um, and then we'll put redstone there, redstone there to connect the circuit up. And then I'm going to want two advanced redstone interfaces. Uh, if you recall, we've used redstone interfaces before in the past. Uh, we're going to go for the advanced one this time. So let me get that. That. Oh wait, I need two of these actually. Okay, so there's two of those. And then we're going to want to get ourselves four, eight, eight position filters. So let's get eight of these. Uh, these are both from random things. Um, you know, we used the, the standard redstone interface before. This one is the advanced one. Basically, you can connect to multiple locations with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this one setting right. I'm actually bring it back one more make sure the redstone connects into it redstone goes there redstone goes there so if there's redstone on this line it's going to send redstone uh, to the appropriate places and then what we can do is we can take our position filters and we're going to say that uh, this side is going to cover this one this one this one and this one so then what we'll do is we'll put these right into there so basically whenever this gets redstone it's going to send redstone to this block this block this block this block and then we'll do the same thing over here that one that one and that one and this will be this side right here oh actually I just thought of something <laughs> I'm doing this all wrong um, okay, let me get, let me get a redstone torch. Um, I don't know, I'm losing my mind. I actually want all these set to pulse. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm losing my mind. Let me think for a second, because I don't want these just pumping out stuff constantly. Um, basically I want the redstone to pulse and send one item and then stop. And <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I really don't. Um, with this setup, I'm losing my mind. Okay, one second. Okay, I think I figured out what I want to do. Um, because we've got these precision droppers, I've got them set to pulse. And basically, I just want it to, at most, once every time frame, pulse, without having to send a mana burst over to the hovering hourglass, reducing our total mana cost to run the system, um, and just kind of making it overall a bit better for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, um, basically, the comparator is going to come out of here, and if this gets signal, it's going to run it down. It's going to go into a block. And this block is going to activate um, a couple sticky pistons. Okay. And then on these sticky pistons, let's go ahead and pull these blocks up here. Pull these blocks up right here. Uh, these sticky pistons are just going to have cobblestone. And then what we'll do is we'll have... Um, let's see, we'll have the redstone go into there... I'm going to have to move those uh, interfaces, which is fine. And what we'll do is we'll bring the redstone down like this. Okay. So whenever the sticky pistons go out, it's going to stop the redstone signal. And then we'll do the same thing right over here. Uh, whoops. I have to bring this down. There we go. <laughs> I don't know what I was setting up before. Uh, and then if it goes out, you can see it stops the redstone signal. It basically disconnects. And so whenever this it gets filled up, it's just going to stop the pulses from being able to sent out, be sent over. Um, and that should work. And there we go. Okay. 
and it should be like a little low lag kind of system for us. Um, and then basically every time this flips, it's going to send a pulse in the other direction unless the pistons are out and then it's going to stop the pulses. All right. And then we'll just have our comparator setting right, oops, setting right, setting right there. So then we need to set up a control for the comparator and say that if it's higher or lower than X amount, then you emit your redstone signal or higher or equal than. Um, now there is the item from Draconic, the potentiometer. So I guess we could do that. Yeah, it's cheap in this pack. I have seen packs where it's very, very expensive. So, um, so we'll just have a potentiometer and we're going to put this setting right there. We're going to set this to, we're going to say if it's above or equal to 13, then you can emit a redstone signal. Okay, and then that should be good. I believe it'll feed directly into the comparator like that, if I recall, uh, without having redstone dust there. Okay, and I think that's good. And then we just have to set up, uh, we got the redstone pretty much ran. Then we just pretty much have to set up item transfer, um, which we're just going to use item ducks. So let me get a few more of these. And then let me get some, well, let me get two reinforced servos. And if I recall, I think reinforced servos can do round robin, right? Yeah, right here, if we do this to round robin, we'll set that. Um, we're going to say stack size extracted. Let's set this down to 16. Okay, so it's going to do 16 at a time. That's good. And then this right here, you can also do 16 at a time. Round robin. Though, actually, I think... Yeah, let me set it down to one at a time. Um, that way, if it's only getting like one at a time, then it's not going to, uh, it's actually going to appropriately round robin because otherwise it, it tends to get a little bit buggy uh, if you're not careful with that. Okay, so we'll just run this back. Uh, let me break off that connection. We don't want it to connect there. And then plug that in. Ignore, and it should start pulling out. There we go. Okay, so it's sending the corned beef hash. And then we just have to run this one out. Let me actually, I'll just go ahead and set that to ignore. So it's pulling out the plowman's lunch now. That is perfect. And then let's go ahead. I guess we're ready to start this thing up. Um, we just have to figure out exactly how much of everything that we need. Okay, so the first one that should pulse will be off in that direction. Um, so we're going to say, this is the one that's on the far side, the corned beef hash. We just have to figure out how long each of these Gormialis are going to run. So if we toss one of those down, it was about a half a minute that it ran. I'm going to give it a little bit extra time just to make up for, you know, possibility of lag or something like that. Um, one thing I do think I want to make is just a couple mana lenses. So I'm going to have to order some runes of fire. Because basically you don't want to feed it. You don't want to overfeed it. You want to make sure it's being fed um, appropriately. And so that it has time to basically eat it. And then it produces mana and sends it to the pool. Okay. Now you'll notice that one single uh, what corned beef hash or whatever. I mean they're identical in food. Um, it... it produce a little bit of mana. So multiply that by four and it constantly running automatically and it should be pretty decent, pretty decent mana and then it should stop um, at the appropriate times for us. So Rune of Fire, there we go, just to help speed this up a little bit. So we'll do that, that. It doesn't have to travel very far so I think it should be fine. Okay and we're gonna start with um, just to give it a little bit of extra time, we're going to start with, um, let's see, red sand is 10 seconds. I don't have any red sand. Alchemy Catalyst, we could make some. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves an Alchemy Catalyst 
Very, very cheap to craft at this point. And then let's get ourselves like four pieces of terracotta. And we got a quest complete for the alchemy catalyst. Let's go ahead. We're going to set it up right here for right now. And this is going to change. We'll have this maybe for automation and stuff. But if we throw in our terracotta now, we're going to get some red sand back. Okay. And then let's see. What did we get for that? And we got ourselves diamond horse armor. Okay. All right. That sounds good. And we'll just put that right there for right now. We will use it, but not at the moment. <laughs> not right this second. So if we take our red sand and we set this up right here, basically it should it should flee up every 40 seconds. Okay, so you can see right now it says it's 40 seconds. And if we give it just a second to flip over here, I do need to set up... Uh, let's do uh, demagnetizers. We'll grab two of these just to make sure that it covers the entire range. And this should be just about to toss them down until so we can see what it does. Hmm, it actually says it flipped. Sometimes it does that on this pack though. So we'll give it another we'll give it another go here. Um, okay, just tossed them. So you can see it's eating the plowman's lunch right now. And it burps and then it starts producing mana. Okay, so it's going to burst down this mana. You can see the Elven Mana Spreaders, how much mana they have, and the Gormialis Flowers, how much mana they have to give. We could actually do it a bit faster, I think, because it's probably... Yeah, it's not quite ready to burst again. I'm going to toss another Magnetizer right there, just to make sure that it doesn't... Uh, the Magnet doesn't work in any side. Go, go, go. <laughs> Seems like it takes it a second to send the, uh... There we go. It just flipped. Okay, so it does take it a second for the animated tor torch to actually recognize it and flip. That's fine. And it should have consumed, uh... That time it should have consumed corned beef hash. Okay, because every time it flips, it sends out a pulse, and it does the, uh, the other food, basically. So... And it's just going to bounce back and forth between those two different observers, um, is what it should do. Okay, and then if we were to set this to, let's set this to zero, or one, you can see uh, it's emitting a signal. If we go any higher, it stops emitting a signal. Okay, so we're going to leave it on like 14. Alright, you can see it's actually filling up this mana pool pretty quickly at the moment. Um... And really, I could do like three red sand, and it would be fine. Uh, fine at three red sand. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to let this fill up for just a second, and then we'll see kind of how it reacts um, here in just a minute. I don't think because Terra Steel is such a like bulk operation, and the way we're gonna have this set up. Let's go ahead actually and get ourselves what we're gonna be using is Sparks. We're gonna use a Spark transfer system. So we're gonna put a Spark. On top of this mana pool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make augments. Spark augments. And we're going to be making these right here. These take uh, different... Uh, we're actually going to need to get ourselves pixie dust. I think each one of these is going to take a pixie dust. Let's do... Well, let's just do four. Um, there's a quest that requires that we make one of each of these. So we're going to go ahead and make dispersive. We're going to make Dominant, which takes a Rune of Fire, uh, Recessive, Isolated, okay, and then we're just waiting on the Dominant. There's our Dominant Spark, which that should complete a quest. It did. And let's go ahead and turn this in. We get a Loot Chest. There we go. And we'll go ahead and pop that. We got Diorite. 64 diorite. Um, the only spark that I actually need right now is the recessive spark. Uh, basically, the recessive spark is going to be lowest priority spark. And it's going to send its mana to anything that has a spark or a dominant spark. We're going to put this on this right here, this mana pool. And you can see that it's, it's sending all of its mana. It's taking all the mana out of this mana pool and just very, very swiftly sending it to these two mana pools. Because these just have standard sparks on them, so they 
basically take higher priority. Okay, and then we'll go ahead. Let's get ourselves. Uh, let's do six. You know, let's do six of these fabulous mana pools. And basically, as long as there's a mana pool with a spark, it's going to, you know, basically spread its mana equally between the different mana pools. Now, once one fills up, it's not going to waste any mana by trying to send it to a field mana pool. It's going to, you know, it's going to send it to the ones that can accept the mana. So what we're going to do is we're going to just lay these out like this. And then we'll go ahead and do like another... Um, let's do another two right there. So once this thing gets some more mana, which I may actually bump down the amount of red sand that we've got... Um, but it should start sending it to all these different pools, basically spreading the mana equally amongst the pools. There we go. So you can see, basically, instead of having, like, super high, crazy speed, um, we're going to have a big buffer of mana. I mean, we're honestly not going to even be making that much Terra Steel before everything's said and done. Okay. Um, and by the way, the sparks are all, they're all detailed within the um, Lexica Batania, so I'm not going to be covering all of them, at least right now. Uh, we may... I just want three of these. Let's try three red sand instead of four. Because I just don't feel like it actually needs the four red sand. So that's that part's done. Now I just have to contemplate, do I want to have this not be able to send a pulse once it gets filled? Which wouldn't be all that difficult to do. Okay, I figured out what I want to do. Um, what we're going to do is let's pull up this comparator... And that redstone and this potentiometer and we're going to have the potentiometer is going to set right there we're going to leave it set to uh, we're going to set it to 14 and then right here we're going to have our comparator that comes out basically reads that the redstone is then going to go over like that and then over here we're going to have another comparator and this one's not going to have anything set to it so as long as there's mana in this comparator it's going to bring out the redstone signal. You can see it's got a redstone signal of one at the moment because there's mana built up in that. <clears throat> and we're going to bring this over like that. Then we're going to set up a logic gate from uh, RF Tools. We're going to put it right here. Let's remove this. And if we take a look at this, this is uh, side C, B, A. Okay, C, B, A like that and so we're mainly looking at C and B that's our inputs okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that if you get a signal from B turn redstone signal on okay um, if you get a signal from C keep previous redstone signal if you get a signal from A then um, well not A I'm sorry <laughs> B is on C is keep okay cuz C is just from this comparator and then if you get B and C, signal is on, okay? So basically, if it gets a signal from C, it's just going to keep the redstone signal. So if it doesn't have a redstone signal, like right now, well, once it gets like one more mana, uh, or one more mark of mana, the redstone will reach, it's just going to keep it. So it's still going to have a redstone signal of off, okay? Um, but then as soon as it gets a signal from this, it's going to activate the signal and it's going to keep that signal activated until this drops down to just like one bit of mana so when it's basically just about empty that's when it'll you know it'll emit a signal okay and then we're going to put our redstone interface down right there this is just a standard one and we're just going to shift right click shift right click okay so this one's going to connect to this cobblestone if it gets a redstone signal, it's going to activate that cobblestone, thus activating the pistons. And what's going to happen is it's going to keep those pistons activated until this runs out of mana. So it's going to keep it from flipping on and off constantly. And it's just going to flip back on once the mana pool is pretty much drained. And that basically that's just to keep it from flipping on and off because I don't want it to, you know, get to the threshold and then keep turning on and off, on and off, on and off. So I wanted some kind of a, basically a control circuit so that it's, it's not going to flip on and off. It's going to basically run until it fills up this, almost fills up this pool. It's going to stop all the redstone from going through. And then it's not going to kick back on until this mana pool is pretty much empty. This is kind of our gateway mana pool. Um, and it just kind of buffers into all of these. So I just want it to, uh, 
basically shut off once everything starts kind of filling up. So, okay, so now if we were to grab the stuff to make Terra Steel, for example, let's grab ourselves a Mana Pearl, Mana Steel, Mana Diamond. Let's go ahead and get two sets of each of these. And we were to come over to here, because we've got plenty of mana in here to make some Terra Steel. And we were to toss in, boom, boom, boom. You can see how fast it crafts. It's much faster now. Which we are going to be automating this process here soon. Um, it'll be kind of short-lived, because we don't actually, we won't actually need this automated, like, super long term. But there we go. There's two Terra Steel. Very, very quick and easy. Not a problem at all. So, good stuff. Okay, so that takes care of that. So next episode, we're going to quickly automate this system uh, very, very simply. So while we're over here, let's go ahead. We're going to be using this next episode. Let's go ahead and toss an open crate right up there. That's going to feed down onto the Terra Steel system, and it's going to be used for crafting our Terra Steel. So, and then I'm going to have to set up a magnet system for this, so we'll go ahead and get a demagnetizer and we'll just pop down here and place it down there we go okay so there is that and it's a pretty decently fast mana generating system I mean it's not the fastest one that we've ever done but uh, it is pretty powerful and it's gonna cover all of our needs for mana pretty much uh, you know for Terra Steel as as long as we need them and then before too long we'll have Terra Steel seeds and then we can move away from this or away from relying on this anyways. So we are going to be doing some more mana setups for, you know, the stuff back here, but we'll get into that later. Um, but, but I'm pretty happy with this. So sorry for the hiccups. I was, I was kind of losing my mind with the holidays and stuff. I'm like running on lack of sleep and, and whatnot. So, so next episode we'll get Terra still automated and then we will probably do a little bit more Batania stuff. I don't think it's going to take terribly long for us to automate Terra Steel. Basically, it's just a, it's just a matter of setting up the recipe, connecting up the the inventories to the dropper, and then making sure that it blocks so that it only crafts one at a time. So, um, but anyways, we'll dive into that next episode. Um, I'm going to end out this episode here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always. Be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. Stay updated with when new videos come out. But anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.